Minh Thúy xin kính chào quý vị hôm nay thứ Sáu, 10 tháng 5, 2024. Đến với VATV hôm nay gồm có phỏng vấn đặc biệt và nhạc lá bồ đề. Kính thưa quý vị, phải chăng giới báo chí lúc nào cũng loan tin những tin tức đen tối và ảm đạm? Tại sao họ lại cố tình đăng tải những tin tức như thế? Tại sao Bộ Ngoại giao lại không thể loan báo những tin tức lạc quan về những thành tựu của miền Nam Việt Nam và của Mỹ vào thời gian đó? Phải chăng những thành tựu của Bộ Ngoại giao quá nhỏ nhoi hoặc là những nỗ lực của các nhân viên hoàn toàn thất bại? Minh Thúy mời quý vị theo dõi sự suy nghĩ và giải thích của ông Lê Sea Rice trong phần 7 phỏng vấn đặc biệt do Phan Lê Dũng, Võ Thành Nhân và Minh Thúy thực hiện. Would you say that that's a part of the problem is because of the media always reporting the dark side rather than the bright side? Well, that's always true everywhere. Uh, so uh, that's, there's probably some truth to that. Whether uh, now, of course, the, 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 the embassy had uh, the task, one of its tasks was to publicize what we were doing. And, and presented in a good and truthful and positive way. Uh, so how, how uh, useful that seems to have been is, would be interesting to go back and see. But, uh, but, but I presume you're, you're still right that uh, just as everywhere in the world, uh, the press focuses Uh, unduly, I guess, on uh, tragedy and problems and all that, uh, that would have had some effect. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about, you know, the foreign servicemen that was working with you in general? Do you think they've done the best they could? Or if, they, if you were to go back and, and do it, would you have done it the other way around? Uh, can you be a little more precise about the question? Or the effort, like you were working in court project, you one of the you one of the personnel of the court project. If you have to go back and redo it, do you see any part that you've done wrong? Uh, I, I'm sure there would be, uh, but but I, I don't think that should take away from what I think has happened, and that is that by and large, many of these programs worked. Hmm? Uh, the land reform program worked. Roads were built. A banking system in the countryside was created. Uh, so, uh, of course, anytime you conduct a big program like this, you always go back and you say, well, I wish I had done that and I wish I had done this. But overall, I think they worked. And in fact, uh, a lot of people say, William Colby was writing about this before his death. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, he, he would have said, and he did say, that by 1973 or so, the guerrilla war had been won in the South. Uh, that is because of all these programs, because of the very controversial uh, Fung Wang program, which whatever you think of its successes, mm -hmm. did have the effect of destroying a lot of the Viet Cong infrastructure in the South. Mm -hmm. So uh, a, a lot of, uh, most of, I think I can say, that most of South Vietnam was, was pacified by then. You could drive around the countryside at night, all of that stuff. And in fact, presumably, that's what triggered in the North Vietnamese the decision, well, we've got to attack them militarily with our huge army. Uh, we're not going to win this war on the ground any other way. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, how do you feel the par uh, the, about the Paris Agreement? Does it somehow redirect the effort that you were doing at the time, or not really? Well, everybody points to the, uh, 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 first of all, as you well know, uh, the Paris Agreement was foisted upon uh, President Chu. Uh, 
and, and principally, I gather, because it, it, it failed to exclude uh, North Vietnamese forces from South Vietnam. Now, uh, some people would, uh, would say, and, ha and have just said the other day, <laughs> that uh, don't forget that when the Paris Peace Agreements were being negotiated, mostly by Kissinger, uh, he had to take what he could get, and, but it was built on a foundation uh, that existed under President Nixon, particularly Nixon's threat that if you, if you don't do this, something very bad will happen, speaking to the North Vietnamese side. If you don't respect the terms of this agreement, something really bad is going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, by the time it was put into effect, uh, Nixon was gone. That was gone. And other negative things had happened in the Congress and so on. So, uh, uh, but, uh, but clearly, the Paris Peace Agreements, as they were uh, finalized and implemented, were very detrimental to South Vietnam. So, if Nixon weren't gone, like a lot of people say, would you say that the Paris Agreement would have been a very successful agreement, or still not really? Hard to tell, because uh, Nixon, I think, would have wanted to carry through on his threat. Well, first of all, if Nixon were there, maybe the North Vietnamese would have been much more careful uh, about what they did in violation uh, of the peace agreement. Uh, if they did violate, if they had violated it, uh, they, uh, Nixon might have uh, made good on his threat to them, or because other things had changed, he might have concluded that he couldn't. He couldn't keep, it because he didn't have the support of the Congress and maybe other reasons. So it's hard to tell. It's all speculation. Mm -hmm. All speculation, but what about the people in your organization? How, how do they actually view, how, how's your emotion when you see the Paris Agreement with all the Americans withdrawn from Vietnam? Oh, terrible. And heartbreaking. That's not only you, that's for everybody in the Foreign sure. Service. Oh, yeah. Awful. Awful. Did you feel like, did you feel like the South going to be on the losing side? After the Paris Agreement, do you think that South Vietnam will be wiped out? No, no, I don't. I don't think. Uh, I, I certainly did not, and uh, I don't think most people. Some might have, uh, but uh, I don't think so. In fact, I think as as the Paris Peace Agreement was coming into effect, uh, January first, nineteen seventy three, I think there was a, a sense of optimism. Uh, that that the South Vietnamese were, were doing well for, for the reasons that we've uh, talked mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. uh, but then things uh, started to go south. Is that just exclusively in the Foreign Service or have you talked to other people in CIA uh, organization or the military? They certainly didn't feel the way you do. Uh, maybe not, maybe not, yeah. Uh, but, but, but I think there was a strain of thought, uh, and I think that uh, a, a very uh, important CIA agent <laughs> uh, was a proponent of it, Bill Colby, that uh, things uh, were, were in a good situation at the beginning of 1973, and if that momentum could have been kept up, uh, things would have turned out differently. Would you agree with that? Uh, if I were back at that time thinking about it, I think I would. I think I would, yeah. Kính thưa quý vị, mời quý vị đón xem phần 8 phỏng vấn đặc biệt với ông Lazy Rice, nhân viên cao cấp sở ngoại vụ, sẽ được phát hình vào tối thứ 6, ngày 17 tháng 5, 2024.